And here we are again, people. This is, uh, yeah, repetition. You know what they say, repetition is a mother of learning. So I keep repeating myself. I keep coming on to this uh, platform every Monday and every Thursday and just waffling. And for some crazy reason, people want to come and hear what I've got to say. And I don't have a clue why. So welcome, everyone. Great to have you all here. For those that are finding the channel for the first time, I am Brian, the UK Bitcoin Master, and this is your alternative to the BBC, the Bullish Bitcoin Channel, where we talk Bitcoin for 30 to 40 minutes, and hopefully I can give you some good Bitcoin signal whilst you're here. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button and retweet the show. That's paramount. Today is the 18th of December 2023, and we really are winding down the clock on 2023. And I've got to say, if you are not excited about Bitcoin and what is going to happen around Bitcoin in 2024 and 2025, you need some serious help. You need to get deep down that rabbit hole. As the thumbnail said, you cannot be more bullish on Bitcoin than right now with everything that's going on. And we will get into that. Before I get into that, disclaimer, no financial advice. Don't come looking for it. Secondly, I would encourage you, if you are finding my channel for the first time, like Mr. 60, welcome. Um Go to UKBitcoinMaster.com. You'll find all my videos. Go to Bitcoin Interviews. That is where clearly you will find all the interviews. There are over 600 or close to 600 or around 600. I lose track of it all. Go check them out, people. And then if you are new to Bitcoin and all of this stuff, you need to understand this phrase, not your keys, not your coins. If your coins are on a phone wallet that is custodial, meaning you didn't need to write seed words down, then they own it, not you. If your coins are on an exchange, even if you trust that exchange, they own it, not you. Get them off, people. Get them off exchanges and off of custodial phone apps and get them onto a hardware wallet because right now, it doesn't matter how much you're paying for SATs, it is what those sats are going to buy you and be worth in the future that really matters. I would encourage you all to go to the uh, show link, right, the show notes right now and click my link tree link. That is where you will find all the platforms that I am on. And I would encourage you, follow me on Rumble, follow me on BitChute. Um, I would encourage you to go and see what other links are down there. If you want a hardware device, uh, there is a link down there also for the Orange Pill app, which we'll talk about um, in a moment. It is all down there, people. Now, very quickly for the noobs, if you see anything like this in my chat after the show is aired or something like this after the show is aired, that is not me. That is a scammer. I will never email you, message you, give you a number to contact me on. Don't fall for it, people. So many people do and have fallen for it. It is not worth it. Now, I want to give a shout out to this guy. I cannot wear his show on the, his shirt. I'm sorry, on the show. He's in the UK and he very kindly sent me a shirt. I'm going to hold it up, but it's got green in it. And if you haven't, already sussed it. I've got a green screen, so um, some of it's going to be transparent. But I wanted to say uh, Store of Value UK, thank you for sending me this Christmas UK Bitcoin Master shirt. Much appreciated. I appreciate anyone that is out there trying to build their Bitcoin merch, their Bitcoin business, etc. So uh, shout out to this guy. Now, also, Matty Pellegrini, who is the CEO of um, Orange Pill, has just very kindly sent me 24,000 sats because people keep joining after me at this segment of my show. And then they're reaching out to Matty and saying, I found this and joined because of UK Bitcoin Master Show. And he very kindly donated 24,000 sats. So, Matteo, if you're watching this, 
mate, thank you so much. You don't have to. I'm just doing it because I believe that the Orange Pill app is a superb app that every Bitcoiner ought to be on so we can build that circular Bitcoin economy. Now, for those of you that are not on it, it does not harvest your data. It is simply an app for Bitcoiners where you pay a subscription. You can do a one month to try it out if you want. You can do a year. You can do a lifetime as um, JC Borter has recently done. Um, check it out, people. And if you want to get 10,000 sats for free, then go to the show notes and use my link. And when you take out your subscription, even if it's a one month trial, you will get 10,000 sats. So why wouldn't you do that? Okay, so back to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Back to the show. Right. Okay, I will forewarn you. I've got an error message saying that my bit rate is all wrong again. And sometimes that crashes the show. So fingers crossed it doesn't happen. We will see how we uh, get on. By the way, shout out to those of you li listening on the podcast, be it Spotify, Google, Apple. It goes out on all those platforms. It is great to know that you're listening, people. But, you know, give us a share where you're listening. Would greatly appreciate it. Not just for me for the Bitcoin ecosystem, for the overall adoption of Bitcoin around the world. Every little bit helps. So I would encourage you um, to, you know, share that way you're listening. OK, so the show, again, you cannot be more bullish on Bitcoin than right now. I just want to just um, preempt what I'm about to cover with you, because I remember when I got into Bitcoin in 2017, the thought of Bitcoin being talked in a positive light across media channels, across certain TV channels, in the newspapers, was like unheard of, absolutely unheard of. The thought of a Bitcoin ETF being approved, yeah, right, Vanek kept trying it, kept getting kicked out every year, and it was just a thing that, oh, yeah, that won't happen, they'll kick that out, and it got kicked out again. And yet here we are in 2023, you cannot pick up some kind of media publication, some kind of channel, program, podcast, whatever it might be, where they're not talking favorably for Bitcoin. Not only that, thanks to the great Rocky Palumbo, who's in the chat, think about this. There is something he calls, and they call a trifecta, which is you have got three, and I say four things, all converging like some kind of monster explosion going to happen. Number one, we are, let's say, circa four months from a halving, where the supply is cut in half from 900 coins a day to 450. 6.25 bitcoins every 10 minutes to what 3.125 every two minutes. Big deal, particularly when I show you what is going on with the chart in a minute. Okay, that's one. Number two, you have all these ETFs that there is tweeting and twittering that they're going to be approved. Now, whether they will or whether they won't makes no odds to me at all. All I know, it will pile drive Bitcoin in an upward direction. That's number two. Number three, without a shadow of a doubt, if you look and study what's going on with the US government, they've now paused. They'll end out starting to drop the interest rates the other way. They'll inject money into the system. Money into the system means Bitcoin number go up. There's that. And then, of course, the fourth one is you've also got an election in the US. And, of course, they want to be favorable to their voters. They want to get their voters in. And we've already seen with that Vivek Ramaswathy, I think his name is, you've got um, RFK Jr. You had that um, Gabby, I can't think of her other name now, very, very pro uh, Bitcoin. She was at the conference as well. And I think she left Joe Biden's cabinet. So when you take all those four things combined, if you're not bullish, I don't know what you are, because at the very, very least, the price is going to double. You know, we're going to see something way more in extremes than that. I think, I think, no financial advice. I've got to say that, no financial advice. But we're going to get into some news articles shortly that is going to really underpin what I am saying. But I always, uh, before we get into that, want to give you guys a shout out in the show. 
So Stephen Redding, John G's in the house, Lance Hoddle, good to see you. JB Bitcoiner, Yorkie Bitcoiner, Johnny Midas coming in from the desert. Elaine, Mrs. UK coming in all the way from downstairs. <laughs> M Warner, uh, don't come on this show talking about sunny Florida when it's horrible here in the UK. Seriously, M Warner, you are welcome. MW from a lovely sunny Spanish island somewhere. <laughs> Welcome. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Whiskey Bravo, Mike's in the house. Stacking Richie Casso. Good to see you as always. Um, Michael Weber is with us from the south coast of the UK. Bitcoin Ascent, California. Mr. 60 is in the house. Good to see you. Uh, Barefoot Barry, we've got New Zealand in the house as well. Who else have we got? I don't want to miss anybody. I saw Mike Dooley is with us. Uh, JC Borter. Um, Stephen Redding, uh, James Legaris, good to see you. Frosty Ashington, uh, da -da -da -da. Mike W, good to see you. Hey, listen, people, welcome everyone. What did JC Water say? On chain fees are currently insane to get Bitcoin from exchange to a hardware wallet. I wouldn't care, I'd just pay the fees, but hey, that's up to you. Um, so, Welcome, everyone. If you want to get my attention, as JC Bort has just done, you just got to type in UK Bitcoin Master, then your message. It will light up in orange. With a bit of luck, I'll see it behind the camera there, and I'll gladly give you a shout out. But that said, let's have a look at the sort of headlines that are out there and see what is going on. OK, so. Here's the first one that makes me so pleased. Ludwig Zibruskus, sorry, from New Jersey. Jersey, didn't want to butcher your name, but welcome. Uh, Leisure vulnerability uh, puts entire D app or decentralized app ecosystem at risk. Here's the thing. I've got my popcorn and I'm yawning. If you are in Bitcoin, if you have a cold storage wallet and you're not getting involved and moving in and out of things like MetaMask and everything else, you got nothing to worry about as far as I can see. Somebody might put me right on that, but just buy, hold Bitcoin. Don't get involved in all this stuff that they make it so complicated that you don't know what is safe, what isn't safe, what you should get into, what you shouldn't get into. And I wonder how many people, when this news broke, were absolutely petrified and freaking out even if they're Bitcoiners just trying to play around with some alts to try and earn more Bitcoin and thinking, holy cow, is this, am I going to get hit with this? You don't have that when you're just in Bitcoin. You know, sleep soundly in, in your bed that there's nothing, no nefarious activities going on, no breaches going on under the hood. You're just buying it. You move it to a cold storage device. You're securing your seeds and you're just getting on with life. And that's what I've chosen to do um, since uh, 8 of May 2017 by moving on to a, a cold storage device and just enjoy life because life goes by so quickly. One minute you're in your 20s, then your 40s. And before long, like myself, you're in your mid 60s and you think, where the heck? Did that go? World explorers or inspiring sights and smiles. Whoa, you made a live stream. Get in there, sir. Good to have you in the house live. You always leave a comment in the chat afterwards, and I always appreciate that. I appreciate all of you that leave those messages, uh, but good to see you live uh, in the chat. So, you know, you've got this vulnerability going on. I wouldn't touch Ledger anyway with their backdoor bit they've put in to try and recover your seed words. You know, I just wouldn't touch it. So if you've got a ledger, um, shame on you. Get yourself something else that is open source and no backdoors being put in. So based on what I said at the top of the show, you've got this news from Forbes Digital Assets. Huge 2024 Biden bailout predicted to crash the US dollar and trigger a 20 trillion Bitcoin and that other load of crap price boom. So... Let's just say that Bitcoin is 50% of that and, you know, 10 trillion comes in. Oh, my goodness. Currently, Bitcoin is about 800 um, billion, I believe. So it's not even 1 trillion. But if it was 1 trillion and 10 trillion came into Bitcoin, good grief. I'm no good with maths. I'm not even going to try and work it out. But, you know, that would make the all-time high look like chump change, in my opinion, particularly when you then factor in this one. I don't do charts, but if you look at this, this is, I think it's, yeah, Glassnode. Um, 
the Bitcoin circulating supply is disappearing. They say diminishing. It is disappearing. The black, the black line is the Bitcoin price. Okay. The gold line is the circulating supply of Bitcoin. So it was going upwards. Now it's leveling off. And you've got to understand when you're looking at 70 to 80 percent of all the Bitcoin currently mined is locked away in cold storage or the keys are lost. That means, as British Hoddle says so well, it isn't the supply crunch that coming. It's a demand crunch. ETFs are approved. Every company in this dog are going to want to get their hands on some Bitcoin. If you look at this next chart, uh, for, sorry, the next um, headline, Fidelity Digital Assets, with the next halving currently set to occur sometime in around April 24, it is increasingly important to understand that this historically significant catalyst could what this swat this uh, historically significant catalyst could mean for bitcoin investors this is key i look i'm not clever enough to come out with fancy words and tell you why but what oozes out of me is total belief that we're all in the right place at the right time for something monumental that is galloping towards us uk bitcoin farmer welcome tony pluck Good to see you from the UK. Um, so it's coming, people. You just got to batten down the hashes, sh hatches, stack what you can and be patient. This thing is coming. But if that weren't enough with everything I've covered so far, you've got this one. The crypto lead at 1.5 trillion, Franklin Templeton. Bitcoin is going to become something every treasury needs to hold. Think about that. Any company with a treasury reserve, what they're saying, big articles like this, these companies are going to go, holy cow, Franklin Templeton, Fidelity, BlackRock, we're going to need to hold some of this stuff. Now start to imagine how many businesses, institutions, companies are on planet Earth, and you start to get some kind of an indicator of what is going to happen. Now, we've heard this before about you know, what happens in a bull market and how, you know, on Google searches, the Bitcoin searches go parabolic. Look at this chart and look at the big spike. That was the top in 2017 when the Google searches were through the roof. Here we are, 41, 489, 490 almost. And right now, look at this down in the bottom right. There's no Google searches going on. So what do you think is going to happen to Bitcoin's price when the Google searches start to go parabolic like it did in 2017? And this is what blows my mind. It really does blow my mind. And it stops me sleeping with what is coming. And all we have to do is ensure that our keys and our Bitcoin is secure away from the idiots out there that want to try and steal it and then just sit and wait. It's like fizzing with excitement. GG from Seattle. Good to see you. Love the film Sleepless in Seattle. Perhaps I'm a bit of an old softy, but there you go. I just saw Seattle and thought I better throw that one in there. Okay. So remember I mentioned Van Eck uh, before when we first started this. Van Eck CEO, Jan Van Eck, he says Bitcoin is the obvious asset that is growing up in front of our eyes, uh, and he mocks Jamie Dimon's comments about Bitcoin, I'm going to say. Quick video from Jan Van Eck. You know, when I try to talk to people who are so doubtful about Bitcoin, I said, listen, that was in 2017, it was $3,000 of Bitcoin. It's up 10x from now. And what? so I think Bitcoin is the obvious asset that is growing up in front of our eyes. There's a lot of political risk around it, absolutely. But what I say as far as something else coming along, there's 50 million users of Bitcoin. So it's got network effects. Um, I think it's impossible for me to imagine some other, what I call it, internet store of value that's going to get leapfrog Bitcoin. Um, you know, so that's number one. As far as the you know criminality and all that kind of stuff, you know, listen, I, I, I listen to what he says here.
don't throw the first stone if you're associated with the bank or any financial <laughs> institution that's never been involved with criminals uh, in one shape or another. I'll leave it at that. It's growing up. Like I said, it's like a child that's growing up. And so, so I, you know, you can argue about it being a bubble. And what I say is no bubble. So it bubbled in 2017, but then it hit all-time highs in 2021. So there's nothing has ever been a bubble that then has outperformed itself. And so I fully expect in this cycle, and you have this happening thing happening in mm -hmm. April, which is great technically for Bitcoin, I expect all-time highs in the next 12 months. So your ticker, I have to say to your credit, is HODL. Yeah, Love very it. happy with the ticker, the ticker, which we announced last week. I just thought that was superb when he said what he said in the UK, and I don't know whether you say it in other countries, but we say people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. JP Morgan, you you can Google it. It's public knowledge. The amount of felonies that they've committed and been fined tens and hundreds of millions for, but they're so huge, they just pay the fly, fine, take the slap on the wrist, and then they go do it again, people. So people in glass houses should not throw stones is my take. Okay, very quick interlude, if I may, because I now have an official show sponsor. And because I have a show sponsor, I need to give them a shout out. If you like family holidays, if you are abroad and would love to come to the UK and would love to be able to have a holiday, over 200 different holiday cottages all around Devon, North Devon, Exmoor, in the southwest of the UK, they've got everything. You can see the one that says Sea View Cottages. My wife and I are going to stay in that in 2024, right on the water. And I just cannot wait. At least check it out, people, because they've got absolutely everything. And if you scan that QR code there, it will take you right to it. You can have a look at all the different properties. I personally have never, ever seen um, a website with so many 9.8 out of 10s and 10s out of 10s in terms of TripAdvisor and that sort of stuff in terms of how good the properties are. Now, the great thing about this, Chris, um, he is a Bitcoiner. He got down the rabbit hole around the same time as me, and he's happy to accept payment in normal currency, in crypto, uh, sorry, in Bitcoin. He's not a crypto, it's Bitcoin. If you use the code there, then you'll get a bit more of a discount, but at least go and check it out, people. I'm pretty excited about our first holiday, you call it vacation in the US, uh, down there in um, 2024. So I just can't wait. Okay, so let's get back to the show. Again, as always, some tweets, but um, I've started to resurrect and kick off my LinkedIn profile again. Um, I haven't really done anything on LinkedIn for ages. I think I've got about, I don't know, over a thousand followers or something, but I've never done anything with it. But I'm now starting to look actively more with what's going on in LinkedIn. And I saw this one uh, from Andrew Howard, former CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a remarkable cryptographic achievement and the ability to create something that is not duplicatable in the digital world has enormous value. As Bitcoin net as a Bitcoin's network as Bitcoin network grows the value of Bitcoin grows. As people move into Bitcoin for payments and receipts, they stop using the US dollar, euros, the one, the British pound, which in the long run devalues these currencies. I mean, crikey, I said, if you're not bullish, what the heck are you doing? How can you not be bullish when everything I've shown you so far is so massively bullish for Bitcoin? you got Bitcoin Ar Archive. Archie tweeted, uh, Global Bank Standard Chartered. Bitcoin Research Note. Expect multiple Bitcoin ETFs in Q124. Institutional money to pour into Bitcoin, 100,000 price target in 2024. I believe it's going to go way higher than that. That is not financial advice. That is just something I believe when you look at those four things converging all at the same time. I think we're going to see something way higher than that. But, you know, would 100 grand do for somebody like me that uh, for, bought a first handful of Bitcoins at two grand a coin? Yeah, just a bit. That's a 50x return just for holding for nearly seven years. Good grief. That's the key. 
it is holding for that length of time. Now, the awesome Bitcoin Ascent, which is Rocky Palumbo, who is in our house right now, he tweeted, Google is lifting its ban on crypto advertising as long as it's for a regulated trust. Just weeks ahead of an expected BlackRock, brackets and others, Bitcoin ETF approval. Coincidence? I don't think so. <coughs> this is all strategic, people, and there is nothing that is coincidence here. Trust me, Stephen Redding, 250K. Again, no crystal ball, but I'll tell you something. This is an exciting time not only to be alive, but to be in Bitcoin, to be a long-term holder or a holder of Bitcoin that's stacking your sats and holding them for the future Crikey, what a time to be alive uh, right now. And then the Bitcoin therapist. I use this dude a lot. He comes out with some good stuff, I have to say. There's going to be a God candle. If you don't know what a God candle is, it is maybe a 10K green candle straight upwards. Normal people will be priced out. That's what British Hoddle says. It will completely change the game. Bitcoin is going to rip a hole in the sky. And that's what I feel as well. I don't even know how to quantify what is going to happen. I just, you know, we all maybe invest in something and, you know, we hope it goes up. We hope it gives us a return on our investment. But, you know, very pe few people passionately believe that something's going to happen but I passionately believe that we are going to see a million-dollar Bitcoin, certainly by 2030, maybe even by 2028. But that's just me. No financial advice. No telling you to go out and invest because what I said is going to do. That's just my own thought process based on all the information, all the podcasts that I listen to, the stuff I read, etc., the so-called experts in finance out there that are saying this thing is just in liftoff mode. Phenomenally excited. Okay, so here comes my video of the day. If you think I'm bullish, have a listen to what's about to come up. Now, you all know probably British Huddle. I've had him on my show. He's doing the rounds on podcasts. Um, he's gaining such a following, such a popularity because... He's a bit like the English version of Greg Foss. He calls it out. He doesn't mint his words. And he talks about, you know, the window for being in a whole coiler is closing and is closing rapidly. But he was recently on a podcast and I thought, I've got to share a little bit with this with you in case there's some of you that haven't seen it. And on the podcast, the headline is how we get to a $5 million Bitcoin. Is that bullish enough? Okay. He talks about the market multiple. The markets are there to be penetrated. He covers that as well. The different markets. He talks of Bank of America figures could be bearish. And lastly, he said, you've got to be a moron to ignore what's happening in Bitcoin. So don't take my word for it. Listen to British HODL. I think you can get to a $5 million Bitcoin without anything in the world as it is today currently changing. Because if you think about it, Bank of America's, you know, done this research where they looked at the, the, the dollar in multiple on the market. And for every, basically at the peak of the last market, for every dollar that was going into Bitcoin, the market cap was going up by $118. That's very unique for Bitcoin. What that means is there's a, in terms of a market multiple, you call it, that's what you call it. It's a one to 118 market market multiple. So if, we want to get Bitcoin to a $100 trillion market. Bank of America is coming out there and saying that it's only going to take a trillion dollars and a supply squeeze, right? And real estate is That's worth crazy. $30 trillion, right? Uh, gold is worth $12 trillion. The stock market in the US is worth $50 trillion. The bond market is worth $120 trillion. And if we just take 1% of all of that, people... So anyone tells me that Bitcoin can't get to a $100 trillion market without anything shifting, they're about to print in the U.S. a trillion dollars for the next quarter. The Treasury is announcing that tomorrow, I think. So it's like anyone who thinks a trillion dollars is too much money to go into Bitcoin doesn't understand. And you know when that uh, fake ETF tweet came out by Cointelegraph? The market in that 30 minutes moved $57 billion. Do you think $57 billion moved into Bitcoin in the space of 30 minutes? Of course it didn't. You're looking at a sub of a billion dollars moving. 
Yeah, about 800 million, something like that. And yet it moved the market 58 billion. So imagine what will happen if billions pour into Bitcoin and then add that multiplier. Multiplier Into Bitcoin within that 30 minute window with the high frequency trading programs that we got. So Bank of America's bull market multiple, as I like to call it, could actually be bearish. Right. Because yeah. if, if somewhere between 500 million and a billion dollars went in and it moved the market cap by 60 billion. You, like what are you, what's going to happen when a trillion dollars goes in really quick? Yeah. Then you factor in the fact that, uh, you know, supply on exchanges is collapsing. Then you supply. Then you go into realizing that BlackRock is now here. Then you go into realizing that there's an 80 percent hodl rate in the bear market. So what happens when the price starts going up? Right. So, yeah, a lot of these things have to come into play. And you've got to be a complete moron if you're arrogant enough to go. All of these things are coming into play. And I'm still not going to learn about Bitcoin. I mean, crikey, <clears throat> if that isn't bullish enough. I mean, I don't understand these multipliers. I don't have a finance background. But from what I can gather, Bitcoin's market cap went up around 58 billion when that fake tweet coming out saying that the ETF had been approved. But there was only about 800 million actually less than a billion, went into Bitcoin. So 1 billion, let's round it up, created a 58 billion market cap growth. Now just imagine if, I don't know, 10 billion, 100 billion, you know, uh, the former CEO of BlackRock now in London said that around 150 to 200 billion will come into Bitcoin over the next one to three years after the ETF is approved. That means batten down the hatches, stack as hard and as fast as you can, because that wall of money is coming, in my opinion. And that, in my opinion, is absolutely mind-blowing, and it, it stops me sleeping at night. So, you know me, I love uh, quotes, and I found this one, I've used it before. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So never say I can't. Never say I can't learn about Bitcoin. It's too difficult because if you want to learn about something, you're unstoppable. If you don't want to learn, no one can help you. I think I'll use that on the last show. The point is I chose in 2017 to jump on YouTube podcasts morning and night and have done. You can ask my lovely wife. She's in the chat. Morning and night for six and a half, nearly seven years, morning and night, even on when we're away on vacation, morning and night. I've got a handful of podcasters that I follow religiously. I don't like falling behind. I watch them all, Simply Bitcoin. There's just loads of them out there that I follow that give out great Bitcoin signal. And I would encourage you to do the same. And if you do, if you want to learn, nobody can stop you. But there you go. Excellence then is not an act. It's a habit. For those of you that want to uh, support the show and you don't have to, I've added another SATS address there um, and my buy me a cup of coffee address. So thanks to everybody that donates. You don't have to. I don't run the show for money. I've got income streams from other avenues. I don't need to monetize this. But many people have said, how can we drop you a tip? There you go. There are four SATS addresses. Thanks again, Matteo Pellegrini, for dropping me 24,000 SATS. And as I just mentioned to Matteo before the start of the show, um, I'm not doing it to get SATS. I'm doing it because I want everybody to get on the Orange Pill app. So um, the show, the link to the Orange Pill app is in the show notes. If you want to drop me a tip, you can do it that there. And then just once more again, I would say go in the show notes, click on my link tree address and follow me somewhere. Now, apart from that, people, that is it. Thursday's show will be the last before the big day whether you celebrate it or whether you don't. But I will be here uh, with all my festive cheer uh, for the last show, the UK Bitcoin Master Bullish Bitcoin Channel live show before Christmas Day. So come and join me on Thursday. Please, I encourage you, tweet this out, share it out, share it out on the podcast, go back into the show notes afterwards and um, leave me a comment, good or bad, because it really does Forgive me, British Hoddle. I love this spank, the YouTube YouTube algorithm, and keeps this video current for longer so that more noobs, when those Google searches go up, can find the show. So please help me 
to also help the YouTube, the Bitcoin ecosystem to grow like crazy because 2024 and 2025 are going to be absolutely flipping epic. That's it. I'm done. I'm Brian, the UK Bitcoin master. I am a very proud Bitcoin boomer. This is your alternative to the BBC, the bullish Bitcoin channel. I'm going to leave you with my social media links and I'm coming back on Thursday, 6 p.m. London. Come and join me. See you all then.